I'd like to welcome you to Mastering Clone Brushing in Affinity Photo for iPad. The clone tool in Affinity Photo for iPad is a powerful and versatile tool that allows you to seamlessly copy and replicate areas of your image. Whether you want to remove imperfections, duplicate objects, or create unique visual effects, the clone tool can be a valuable asset in your editing toolkit. In this guide, we'll explore how to effectively use the clone tool to enhance your photos and unleash your creative potential on your iPad. In the world of digital photography, the ability to retouch and enhance images is indispensable. Whether you're a professional photographer or an enthusiast, the power to perfect your photographs lies at your fingertips. Clone brushing is a fundamental tool that can elevate your photo editing skills to new heights, and this tutorial is here to guide you through the process. So having it ready is essential. And two, basic familiarity. With no prior experience with Affinity Photo is required, a basic understanding of how to navigate your iPad and its touchscreen controls will be helpful. With these prerequisites met, you're ready to embark on a journey of discovery, creativity and mastery as we delve into the world of clone brushing in Affinity Photo for iPad. Let's get started. Let's have a look at the seven main settings that we use. Opacity, scale, accumulation, flow hardness and rotation and width that appear on screen when the clone tool is selected. When you select the clone brush tool, and there it is selected, you have a context toolbar that appears on the left hand side when you're working in landscape mode, particularly like this. Now, the settings that we're concerned about with here, uh, in the top row, there are toggle, opacity, scale, and accumulation. Opacity setting controls the opacity of the cloned pixels. A lower opacity will make the cloned pixels more transparent, while a higher opacity will make them more opaque. This setting is useful for blending the cloned pixels with the underlying pixels or for creating a more subtle effect. Now the next toggle is scale and that controls the size of the cloned pixels. A lower scale will make the cloned pixels smaller while a higher scale will make them larger. This setting is useful for cloning objects of different sizes or for creating a more exaggerated effect. Now the third option in that one is accumulation. The accumulation setting controls the amount of paint that is applied with each brush stroke. A lower accumulation will apply less paint, while a higher accumulation will apply more paint. This setting is useful for creating a more gradual build-up of the clone pixels, or for creating a more solid effect. Now the next ones we're looking at are the next hardness and flow. Now the flow setting controls how much paint is applied with each brush stroke. A lower flow will apply less paint, while a higher flow will apply more paint. This setting is useful for creating a more subtle effect or for painting in areas more quickly, particularly larger areas. Now the lower of the three is this one here, and you've got rotation or width. Now these ones with rotation, the setting controls the angle at which the clone pixels are applied. A rotation of zero degrees will apply the clone pixels at their original angle. A rotation of 90 degrees will apply the clone pixels rotated 90 degrees clockwise. And a rotation of minus 90 will apply the clone pixels rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. This setting is useful for cloning objects that are at an angle or for creating a more dynamic effect. The width setting 
controls the width of the clone brush. A wider brush will apply a larger area of clone pixels with each stroke, while a narrower brush will apply a smaller area of clone pixels with each stroke. This setting is useful for cloning objects of different sizes or for creating a more precise clone. And you can see those again if you hold the question mark key in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the second column vertically down under the words blend mode. You'll see them there, accumulation, opacity, scale, flow, hardness, width, rotation, and two that are on the top of the bar, the toolbar, force pressure and aligned. And I'll explain those later. They're your four or your three controls, each with toggles. Scale, accumulation, opacity, hardness and flow. You'll see the hardness is set to zero to start with. And this one here, rotation, 273 degrees. Let's set that to zero. We don't want the pixels rotated. And width, well, it's 305 at the moment, which is a fairly wide brush. Now, let's have a look at the screen we're going to start working with. You'll notice that I've got a pixel layer selected here. Pixel layer. Now I've added that pixel layer above my image, which is the person on the mountain bike there racing over the mountains, and I've locked that because I don't want to alter that. If you inadvertently forget to do this, you'll be writing on your original image, and you don't want to do that. Although your original image will probably be in your photo store somewhere, you don't want to have to reload it and carry on that way. So always put a blank layer, a pixel layer above what you're going to paint on, the easy way. Now the top bar, we've got current layer and below. If you're on the current layer, then you're selecting, for example, the one below it there, just using that main layer. And the layer beneath, which means you're not writing on the pixel layer you're going, you're just using the layer beneath, which you want the current layer and layer below, current layer and below. Now, the blend mode is set to normal. I don't want to mess with the other ones at the moment. And we've got here horizontal, vertical, or both, but none is for that bar there. The alignment, we don't want them, we want them aligned, the pixels aligned so that everything happens at the same time. Force pressure, no, I don't want to be controlling it with force pressure. On the context toolbar at the side, I've got the scale to 100%, the accumulation to 100%, and the opacity to 100%. So everything should repeat at exactly the same size. The next one down is the flow is 100% flow, and the hardness, I was just trying to get that to show a bit longer, the hardness is set to 100%. So nice sharp edges. Now this one here, the angle is set to zero and the width of the brush I've got set to 305. Now let's see what happens when I proceed to try and clone the person on the mountain bike. At this point, I've got everything set. I've got a new pixel layer sitting on the top and I'm about to select the clone brush. 300 pixels, 100% and 100% and you'll see that they're ticked to the right of both of all three options. There's the, the selection option there, ticked to the right. Now let's turn on this, that's the alt click and We'll select the rider, turn off the alt click because we don't want to end up with a new selection and just start painting over here. Now if you look carefully you'll see the little X travelling around the bicycle wheel and the frame around the front wheel. You don't have to try and get that exact but if you go around the edge that makes sure you've got the entire bicycle. Now you've got 
an exact clone of that chap on that person on the bicycle, um, just a bit further in the distance, it would seem. So let's make that person a little bit further in the distance. Now you can see the pixel size there. Let's have a look down here. We'll set it to zero. It's 1.72 inches by 28 inches. Let's lock that on. Turn the lock on in the middle there. And we'll just drag down on that and reduce the size of the bike and the rider. And that puts them pretty firmly in the background, doesn't it? Without any other messing about. We'll turn that back on there. We're still on the pixel layer. We're still on the move tool. Now we can even put that down a bit there as if that ride has come off the ridge first. Now it's time to have a look at some of the settings. Let's look at this one first. Width we've got set to 75 pixels. Let me set that to 50. I want to show you what happens when you set these settings much lower and be very careful in your selection. So let's look at those again. That's the rotation. Well, we can leave that at zero. We don't want to rotate the image. And the width, just tapping on that alters that little dot. So it's on the right now and it's 50 pixels wide, which is not a very wide brush. The next one up, which is this one, Set the hardness to 10%. That means it's not a very hard edge that it's creating. It's a very soft edge. And in fact, I might bring that down from 10 and I'll make it 5%. So it's a very feathered edge. Now, the next one on there is the flow. Let's bring the flow down to 25%. That's the amount of paint that's put on at any one time. So you can really adjust that. The one at the top. We've got opacity, oh, I'll leave that at 100 at the moment. And the scale, fine, that's 100%. And the accumulation, that's, um, well, you'll see in the instructions, that's how the paint adds up as you place it. And we'll just leave that at 100% because I'm doing a figure at the moment, the bike, a hard surface. If you were doing something like flowers or clothes or hair, you'd have to adjust all those as well. But We've got our pixel layer selected over the other side. Now, let's tap that on. We'll tap the get the Alt key on because I want to make a selection. Now, this is not a very big brush, remember. There's our bicycle rider selected. I've got it there. You'll see there's not much overhang in that brush size, so I'm not getting much of the white area as well. Turn that off. Now let's go over here and begin to paint the rider. You can see the little crosshair is around on the back wheel. I'm trying not to go over the edges too far. If you've got a small brush, you can do this. Go around the edges and you're not picking up any of the any of the area outside of the wheel. Well, not very much. This is a very small iPad, remember. This is an iPad Mini 6. And I'm just carefully going around the person. You can see over there. Now that I've got that pretty much done. Now that's very small. I'm back up there. You can see that seat. Okay, now I can relax a little bit and without lifting me brush off the off the surface so I can go in and paint the missing areas. It's doing that fine. There's not much overlap there. Remember the paint flow is also very low at the moment. So I want as much of that in as I can get. If you keep going over it, then you get a, a slightly increased pixel flow. Now for something this size, that's not bad. If you're doing flowers or clothes, of course, as I mentioned, make some adjustments. 
Now we've got everything in there. That wheel could do with a bit more work. There we go, darkening up that tyre by putting more paint on the layer, as it were. That's not too bad. Let's go up and do the tyre there. So that tyre is a lot blacker than it was. Let's go over and just make sure we've got the rear tyre. Don't try and watch the crosshairs while you're doing this because you'll end up with 64 bikes all copied on there. Now that's probably as good as I'm going to get that. Just go backwards and forwards in there to make sure I've got a good layer of pixels on there, a good, a good amount of paint. Because what I want to show you is now that that's there, that's not bad. But what I want to show you now is what happens. So if I go back to the Move tool, and we've got that little um, selection box around it. We'll just move down there into the darker area. Now you can see the bike has a very slight shadow, well, a lighter shadow around it. And you can see where I went over the wheel more times to make sure the wheels were tyres were dark. The body's not too bad. Now you would be able to fix that because remember that's on a layer of its own. You can turn that layer off. You can turn that layer on. There's a layer of it on its own there. You can see the brush icon in the layer next to the, just there, next to the visibility thing. That means you can continue to paint that if you wanted to, wherever it is. But we're on the move tool, so let's move him back up there. Now you can't see that overlay, the overlap, because it's about the same Mm, it's about the same opacity. That's still locked on, so let's reduce him in size. And now that's right out there, as if he's a long way off. You can't see that overlap at all. However, if you had have used a very big brush to try and get the whole rider in at once, you would almost certainly have all of that discoloured background. Now, let's put that back there. That's our layer, all on its own. Now, let's have a look at a couple of other um, examples of how we can modify an image. Let's put in our pixel layer. You don't want to be modifying the original. That's a recipe for disaster. So select our clone brush tool. We've got 305 pixels on that at the moment. Everything else is set to 100% except the hardness is very soft. The flow is 100%. Hardness, 0%. In fact, very soft. Okay, that one's opacity is 100 and scale is, it says 100%. That one there is, the, we don't want to move it. The width is 305. So it's a fairly large brush. That's okay for this one. Let's turn on our selection option. Now I'm going to do the top part first. I want to remove the girl from the image. So we'll select a nice little floral area there. And you can see the crosshairs are right on that little flower still. So if I go over here, I can start brushing that girl. Now mind I don't get the crosshair onto the girl. Otherwise I'll be painting, repainting what I'm trying to paint out, which doesn't work at all. Now see I'm getting down into the darker areas but the crosshairs are following down there. Now that's very good. So long as the crosshairs don't get out over the border, otherwise you'll be painting a border in there. Now look at that. That girl is just about gone. You'd have to have a good eye to see her in there now. Let's go back to there. And that's, you can see the area where I've painted over. Now it's very difficult to tell it apart. Let's turn it off. And there she is, and there she isn't. Now I can see just down the bottom there, there's another little piece of image down there and I'm not too sure what that is. I may have accidentally touched this image with the brush when I was setting it up. But anyway, we're back there. 
deselect everything, touch anywhere outside, and it's gone. Yes, there is definitely something there, but we can paint that out. And you can see there's our layer there. And there's our operational layer there. Now that's locked, that image. And there we go. Right, that's that one. Let's try another one. Let's try this one. Now there's a nice big flower on a muddy patch. Pixel layers all ready to go. Select the clone brush tool. Mm, got 305 for the um, rotation. The width is 305. 305 is pretty big. That first one's hardness. Um, do we want a sharp edge? Yes, let's take that up to 50. And you can just see the brush size popped up then. Now, remember that these observe the brush sizes. Note I'm not, I'm not touching any of these up here at the moment. We don't, want this, um, we don't want this tutorial except for that one. You want current, layer and below. We don't want this tutorial going on for hours, do we? Okay, clone brush tool. Select the alt because we want to select the flower. Turn that off. And that's quite a big brush, so be careful where we put the flower. Just paint the flower over there. There's the leaves, there's the leaves out that side. And there we go, there's another nice flower placed in the, right next to the other one. Lovely. And that's all there is to it, really, for this little exercise. Thanks for watching.